Good evening, everybody, and thank you for holding out that long. So I could say a kia hair to everybody here. And, um, but with my Punjabi isn't as good as it used to be, and I grew up in, you forgot to say one thing, I did actually, as a child, spend eight years in Chandigarh in the Punjab. So India is not uh, a strange country to me, and I've got quite a strong affinity to India. I was asked to give you a quick speech here in regard to technologies for a better world. And of course, when you have to give a speech like that, who do you ask first? I ask my children, of course, of whom two still live at home because they're still at school. And when I ask them what they would do, what they would consider technologies for a better world, the answers I received were, of course, very, very subjective. And completely, as they spoke to themselves, to make their own lives better. It was like, invent a robot that makes my bed, empties the dishwasher, does my homework and the machine that allows me to teleport. These are just a few of the examples they came up with. But this is it. I think all, all is very subjective and egocentric. We all have to be. And that is what has driven mankind's innovations, and many of them for a better world indeed. A world we want to live in and a world we want to be part of. Allow me just to go back a few years in time and tell you a short history. In the early 70s, and to some of you who were born in the 2000s, I mean, this is really ancient history, I once was on a tour in remote Scotland and staying at youth hostels. And there I met a guy from the United States whose great-grandfather had died at the age of 102. He had grown up riding as a shotgun guard at the age of 14 in, 19, in 1885 on stagecoaches for Wells Fargo. He saw the invention of the electric light, the telephone, the automobile, the aeroplane. He saw the horrific wars. He saw the first men in space. And then in 1969, the landing on the moon. He then decided he had seen it all and died in peace. I thought that such an experience like this would never, ever occur again. And how wrong I was. And how wrong when we look back to think so. I have gone through the whole range of inventions in my lifetime that saved and changed the style of life on this earth. I started off in university with computers with punch cards. It's a laughing stock. When I told my children about I had floppies or floppy disks, they laughed their heads off and said, what's this? You're ancient, man. Then came tapes. Then the fax machine. Who does anyone of you remember a fax machine or what a fax machine is? You say, scan it and send it to me or take a picture of it. And my children, then came the video conferences. I can still remember an industry when we had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up video conference rooms so we could communicate with India, with China. And most of the time, basically, the guy was speaking to you. It was lacking the voice. Or the, the, the picture was three, three minutes behind the, the voice. Or basically, stand still. And half the time, it didn't work anyhow. And my children, and most of you, have inherited technologies unthinkable 25 years ago. And you will carry forward innovations and technologies that will change the surface of this earth. We must encourage innovators to use their innovative and intellectual power in ways to improve the world. And I would, where do I personally see technologies for a better world? I went through it, and here are my, my ideas. Firstly, technologies for a clean and safe environment. You'd seen it before. We talked about clean water safe environments. We need all, to list all the possibilities, of course, I think would just basically be mind-shattering tonight and would be a never-ending story. I would like to mention recycling technologies, including robots that work on seabeds and ocean surface, cleaning up the mess we dumped there. Clean energy, photovoltaic, solar, wind, hydro. We all do want to have clean energy, no smog, no coal power plants, no nuclear power plants, because there the waste is a huge problem. And we should not forget Sela Fields, Harrisburg, Chernobyl, and latest of all was Fukushima. But we do not want to pay more for it. And let's be honest, why should we? Why should we be punished and put a higher price for clean energy? I think the reverse should be the case, and maybe one day it will be so. One should have to pay more for dirty energy, and this would really change the paradigm considerably. Then there's e-mobility, and I think that KPIT is working in the right direction in that field and is leading in the field in some areas there. Vertical farmhouses, 
These are skyscrapers that, due to the increasing urbanization of our societies, can be utilized for cleaning the air in urban areas while using very, very little basic space at the same time and provide fresh food for the population living in the surrounding area. Secondly, lifestyle. Now, with this, of course, I do not mean fashion, I don't mean fashion, or holiday making at a lovely beach or finding oneself in Nepal or an ashram. Now, being here in Pune, I think the ashram will come closest to it. No, what I mean is education in all varieties and variations, open and free to everyone without any bias to color, creed, religion, and nationality, to be able to learn and to have the means to pass it on to others. Medical care, computerized medicine, medical diagnosis. This includes the data processing and data storage of millions of patients worldwide. Comparison of sickness and cures, and thus finding the best possible cure. Using massive amounts of data to be analyzed to specific software to help determine early and best treatment in any part on our planet. Equipment data hardware that enables handicapped people to see, feel, smell, hear, and to participate in our society. Healthy food, and of course, mobility in all forms and variations. Internet, data, transmissions, communication. I have no clue what the future brings but I am quite sure that you will be part of it, and so make sure to make the best of it. Thirdly, 3D printing. Well, they call it 3D printing, but actually it's nothing but an extrusion machine that, use, that extrudes all sorts of materials to produce all sorts of, in most cases, maybe useful items. In this case, we have to use inorganic materials for various industrial usage. Organic materials to be used in human bodies such as hip replantments or bone structures. Biomaterials, this can and will include human tissue for surgical transplantations, skin replacements after suffering severe burns and accidents. Food, one may be able to create, just like in Star Trek, and we've all seen it, a plate of some sort of edible substance. And if need be, we can also eat the plate as well. During the last IFA, which is the uh, electronic consumer fair in Germany in Berlin. I ate cookies made by a 3D printer. And in all honesty, they tasted OK. So fiction is being overtaken by reality again. I could give you many more examples, and I'm sure that you could respond with ever more. Ultimately, to create a better world, one must be willing to think outside the box, to change things that need to be changed despite obstacles to, when necessary, make certain risks. Importantly, we must learn to speak up and to articulate our fears and worries to ensure that we work on what is truly important and that our work researches the full potential we must be willing to fight for the ideas. At KPIT, we have to think very hard beyond simple software. We have to think in very complex systems. The accelerated development of hardware could be slowing as we reach limits to what is physically possible. Transistors can't get much smaller, at this point at least. On the other hand, that means we will need to rethink how software and hardware interact. We will want to get most of it and of our systems and allow technology as a whole to keep developing, even if hardware does not. When I first started, the most important aspect of writing codes was very efficient for the efficiency and for conserving memory. That's a long time ago. On the other hand, we will have to spend and get involved early in the creation process of systems, possibly in the design of hardware. This allows us to optionally tailor software to hardware for specialized purposes. All this is a great chance for us. Having said all that, by the end of the day, you are the future as are my children and my grandchildren. And it's up to you how this future materializes. So go for it. Einstein once said, it has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity. If this is the case, then let's reverse it. Let us develop technologies that match our ethics, 
mirror our humanity so that we can use technology, technology to create a better, more humane world for everyone. Shukriya. Questions? I just don't think so. If there are, I gladly answer them. There was one or you just take the arm away? <laughs>